Welcome back to the show, everyone. I hope you have your sunscreen on. And if you're wondering why in the world on the West Coast you would need sunscreen this time of year, we are about to tell you why. And it is quite a little bit frightening, a lot enlightening. And uh, how much sunscreen you should be wearing. We're joined now by Dr. Francis Jang to tell us a little bit more. How are you? Hi, Francis. Great. Uh, now, I think people have heard this before, right? I mean, you have to wear sunscreen year-round, but I don't know if many people understand really why and, and the reasoning behind it. Yeah, well, I think if we, um, we, we really make a case for it even in this temperate climate, because if, as you can see on the screen, when we look at the graph of ultraviolet, it, it really is coming through all year round. So, so this one, we hear about UVA, UVB, and you want to make sure that your sunscreen covers both. It's so-called broad spectrum. UVB is the burning rays. They penetrate down into the top layer of the skin, the so-called burning rays. But more than that, UVA, which is substantial even in wintertime, goes through windows. I never deeper. knew that, and it goes and deeper into the skin. It does go deeper into the skin, and it, all, it definitely increases your risk, and it's accumulated damage. It's not that one trip to Hawaii. It's accumulated sun damage through your lifetime, and not only does it make your skin more wrinkled and become discolored, but it definitely increases your risk for skin cancer. So, so even on a day like today, we Absolutely. should be wearing, are, are there UVA and UVB rays yeah. on a day like today? Yes, you can see on the graph here that uh, this is taken <laughs> in temperate climate. I, I think they're implying with the UVB rays that they're looking at white rock, but I don't <laughs> see we quite. Sunny see that <laughs> white rock. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, this, these are averages. But you can see that from March to October, there's uh, quite a bit of UVB, um, and then it drops off uh, quite December, substantially, yeah. um, but the UVA stays up um, at a reasonable level. So we want to protect against that all year round. Okay, okay let's talk about protection before yeah. we look at the other pictures, because there's all sorts of options. Uh, tell us what we, we've yeah, got so, here today. So the, the, the previous problems with sunscreen is that they were white, mucky, and horrible, and they didn't really address all sorts of different skin types. And now at the drugstores, we have a huge variety of sunscreens. But number one, you want to look for one that's UVA, UVB, or so-called broad spectrum, yeah. you want to look for one that's SPF 30, okay, which really relates more to its ability to screen out the burning rays. Mm -hmm. And then, however, apart from that, you want to put on the right amount. Okay, you brought a couple of, uh, of measuring devices yeah. to show people the right amount. And this is actually, this is quite surprising. This is really yes. surprising. So all those measurements, SPF 30, et cetera, are done in a lab at a certain thickness. They're applied on rabbit ears, actually, yeah. or people. Um, and then they measure and see how uh, readily they burn or don't burn. But this is the amount And this is just using. for your face. <laughs> Wait, 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 for your hold face, still, hold still. okay. So that's just for your face. That's now, how much you got to put on your face. I put a fraction so, of that on. Yes. My face. So to, in order to get the SPF 30, which is what this one is, yeah, you want to put on this much. Wow. And interestingly enough, if you put on half this amount, you don't get an SPF 15. You actually get about an SPF 4. So you're robbing yourself of that protection. You absolutely are. So don't be deluded into thinking that you put on a smidgen of this and you're yeah. protected. So. And to be practical, what I tell my patients who are really diligent about putting on enough is that you probably have to do it a couple of times. Like put on some, let it, uh, let it soak in, and then rub it in, and then put on another layer. And so how it's much quite should you do for your body? This is surprising So too. here's my shot glass. This is my shot glass at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's important so, to be empirical in yeah. all your measurements. So we want one ounce, OK? So, so one ounce. This is for your body. Is so much more than I put on again. Yeah. One ounce for one body. So that's the amount that your SPF is measured at. So, and then again, so reapply. again, reapply every two to three hours. And then again, every time you come out of the water, uh, if you're sweating a lot or exercising. And of course, if you're bigger or if you're slightly yeah, shorter. Yeah, this is like an average, you more, know, average. More yeah. or less. Uh, you brought a whole bunch of products because uh, uh, the range of protection that you can get from different products yeah. is, is pretty stunning. So we've got stunning. nice moisturizing sunscreens mm -hmm. for the winter. So here's yeah. a good example. There's many at the drugstore. Um, so that's an attractive thing. We, um, this is kind of a unique one, which I like. This is a mineral sunscreen, so which implies it doesn't have any chemicals. And it's for the person who wants to touch up perhaps during and the day or get a little finish look. And it's a powder. And it's a powder. So you just... Um, oh, wow. And it comes in different shades, a little bit darker or lighter. And it gives a nice finished matte finish to the, to the skin. Now, this nice. is a 20, so but they're coming out with a 50 fairly soon. Or anything from um, similarly, you know, this kind of thing for over mm -hmm. the top. And I've got something really neat. We're now coming out with primers. And primers, you probably won't know too much about these, Michael, but um, I'll show. Um, oh, well, let's do this hand. OK. So we're going to put a little bit in the web of your hand. This is a primer, and it's used underneath the foundation. It's a 20. 
and um, it finishes the skin very nicely by minimizing the size of the pores and giving you this really beautiful look. Now you'd normally put on makeup over this, but I think if you look at oh. the texture of the two skins, I look. Skins, I have a younger left wrinkle, hand. Wrinkle be gone. Yeah. My left hand is younger and fresher. Wow. So we're coming out with all sorts of strategies to make it as user friendly as possible. Okay, let's look at the pictures yes. because we've cautionary got some, tales. Yeah, and dramatic results as well. So we're not even talking about skin. This is nice, healthy, middle-aged skin. It's a fair skin. You can see there's pores. There's a little bit of variation in color, but pretty uniform, and that's a, a beautiful skin that's being protected. Here's a person that, although she's dark skin, she felt she could go out with impunity because she doesn't necessarily burn. But here she is approaching 50, sun and you damage. can see that she's got significant sun damage on her skin, primarily in terms of brown splotches as well as fine wrinkling on her skin. Uh, is this kind of sun damage? Is it reversible? I mean, is there? Yeah, we've got various lasers and peels that we can use on the skin. But, but you, you don't want to get there. If you don't want to get there. If but you if don't you have do, to. Uh, yeah, yeah. But... we've got this gentleman here. Now, is this sun damage so, on the left? So this is another kind of sun damage that we'll see on more scare, fair skin people and you can see that there's all these little red blotches and they're, if you were to feel them, they're a bit scaly. These are called actinic keratoses. And he's got a fair smattering of broken dilated blood vessels as well, which is again an expression of sun damage. And this makes him look much older than his, he's mm -hmm. in his early 50s. So then we have to do this laser and you can see his skin is much better, but you know, it's, it's, it's not with, with great yeah. ease that he did yeah, this. Yeah, it's not yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, so prevention fun. is so obviously... prevention yeah. is key. And this is another laser? And here's laser. another one that's had another laser uh, treatment and she's got some uh, scattered, what we call dyschromia from the sun and you can see it's a lot healthier. That was a less radical laser. Um, but you can see again, we, we can help people repair these things as we can deal with skin cancers. But clearly skin cancer is related Rising, to sun yeah. exposure. And it's and not the just more the wrinkles. We can get, yes. And it's good, we're all outdoors a lot more now because mm -hmm. we're more healthful, we're out there jogging, gardening, whatever we're yeah. doing, but we do have to protect our face. Have to be aware. Yeah. Dr. Jane, thank yeah. you thank as you always. Thank you so much. That was Pleasure marvelous. to be here. I'm going to go get out my sunscreen yeah. right now. That's we're going to take a break.